everybody, welcome to Land of Obsession. In this show, we're going to be showing you how to save all the money, well, lots of the money, on your next Orlando visit. Want to know more? Stay tuned. So, Kimberly Ball. No, Kimberly Lewis. Kimberly Lewis. Married. What's her first tip? So the first tip is to, if there's a large group of you, to stay in a villa. Mm. Disney and on property rooms in general can get very expensive. <laughs> Fact. Yes. Even, I mean, at the moment where we're looking, Art of Animation is currently more expensive than about 75% of the moderates. And it's that big. Yeah. And to be honest, you'll have so much fun. Yeah. For villas will sleep nine. They get a well-located one, which isn't far from the parks. And you get to do a food shop in Walmart or Target. Yeah, that's true. That's a bonus that we don't get if you yeah. stay your property. It's a final sacrifice. You don't get the extra magic hours, but there's no cheaper way for a large group to stay in Orlando than well, maybe a tent. But <laughs> assuming you don't stay in a tent or rough, <laughs> then a villa is the way to go. Yeah. Next tip. Yes. Be prepared to be flexible. Now I know this isn't one for everyone. When you say flexible, there's several ways you can do this. First of all, be flexible as to where you fly to and from. We normally want to go from London and we normally want to go to Orlando. However, if you fly from Manchester and you fly into Jacksonville, there's a couple of hours traveling extra way, but you can save hundreds, if not thousands of pounds on your airline. On a family of four, you can save three to four thousand pounds by flying to Jacksonville or one of the lesser known airlines like Norwegian Air or one of those. You can also fly indirect, painful, but again, you can save hundreds to thousands of pounds on a family flight. In addition to that, be flexible about your dates. If you know you want to go on, say, a three or a four week window, wait for those daily discounts to land. The flight that would have cost you three or four thousand pounds to book six months in advance could cost you three or four hundred pounds if you wait until the day and you get a last minute reservation. So the next tip, time it right. Any time of the year that is classes off peak will have a cheaper flight. And be quieter. Yeah. Sort of. Universal, definitely, yeah, I think. Bush. But yeah, but with Disney, I don't know if Disney really has an off season anymore. It's busy or busier. The off season used to be late September, October, early November. But because of food and wine and everything like that, Halloween. you will Halloween, you will find that it is busier. But there are times of the year, if you're happy to go early in the year. January, February time, yes, it's colder. There may very well be some refurbs going on. If you can wing it, go outside school holidays. Yeah. UK, and in particular, UK and American school holidays. If you can fit in outside those times and the big American holidays, you can save a lot of money. Yeah, I've made an absolute mistake once and visited during the weekend of uh, Columbus Day. Oh, you're not going to get in the parks. No, no, I didn't do anything. <laughs> Next tip, planning ahead on your tickets. Buying your tickets before you travel. Buying your tickets at the gate is a fool's game. Now, there are places out there where you can get like Bush Gardens and SeaWorld and some of the less lesser parks at a good deal on the day. But by far the best deal is to buy your park tickets and to buy them well ahead. In fact, there are some park tickets, like the 14-day hopper, you can only get in the UK. It's not even available in America. In America, a seven-day park costs the same price. So plan your days ahead. The other side of that coin, though, if you don't think, be realistic about the days you can visit. If you don't think you can fit 14 days of Disney World in, five days of Universal Studios, three days of SeaWorld, three days at Busch Gardens, Kennedy, International Drive, and basically 30 days of theme parks into your seven to 14 day vacation, where do you think you can save the money? You do that math. I know it's tempting to buy these multi-park hoppers that last forever. And yes, if you are prepared to literally park hop every day, which is tough, you've got to be seasoned to do that, then you can get the most out of them. If you're not going to visit the parks every day, don't buy those multi-day tickets because they can really add up and be very expensive. American tickets, AmericanAttractions.com. Attraction tickets, direct. That's the one. They often have cracking deals. Shop around, don't buy the first deal. Also, the next one, don't forget about the local attractions. You've got Wonderworks, Yolanda Eye. International <laughs> Drive is a smorgasbord of entertainment. 
a good word. There are things that you'll see that you'll Smart think report. they're just <laughs> roadside attractions, <laughs> but they are brilliant. Yeah. Personally, I sat on the floor for the whole of the Orlando Eye. Ah. You had a great time. I love the Orlando Eye. It's great. So yeah, don't write them off. No. And you you can actually get the same as where you can get like a Merlin pass in the UK. You can get a couple of different attractions like Madame Tussauds yeah. or Tussauds and the Sea Life Dito. Aquarium and the Orlando Eye together. But they're good. And we had a brilliant day the day that we did all that. We did, really we did, good. We did some great photos of in the, the Madame Tussauds waxworks where we just messed around. We had a great time. Yeah. So this is one you will have heard before and that's avoid eating at the parks. And I'm a, I'm a little torn with this one because if you eat in the parks, you can save a lot of time. So maybe, you know, work out where your value proposition is here. What is your, your priority? But if you can plan a little bit ahead and avoid eating in the parks and instead take a packed lunch, eat breakfast in the hotel. If you're staying in a villa, you can fill your fridge full of food oh, and take it with you. It's the dream. <laughs> you know? Those turkey legs, as good as they look, they're not that tasty. So a lot of a lot of theme park food isn't always particularly good, and it's but it always is expensive. Take bottles of water, top up that water at the water fountains, take some snacks, take some sandwiches, and here's the thing: you can eat them in the queue, you can snack in the queue, so you can get your, your time back that way by eating and queuing at the same time. Just obviously don't eat a big thick shake before queuing for Thunder Mountain because that could go really horribly wrong. We actually asked for some tips and we had a viewer recommend us what they actually do to save money on breakfast is they buy a box of cereal yeah. and they get milk yeah. and they put it in their refrigerator mm. and they have cereal before they go to the parks, they buy bagels. Yeah. So they've got almost like a little continental breakfast of their own and they just top that up every couple and of days it's great. and they saved Hundreds. Oh, easy. Because you're not spending fifty dollars per person then on a character meal. No. So the next tip that we personally we always drive, but that's because we've kind of got to because we like to go a bit further. We like, yeah, we try. We do a lot of visiting on our trips. Yeah. But if you don't. Yeah. The bus is it's, so it's completely free. We check those to you from your hotels if you're staying off property. Not not so true if you've got a villa. But the international drive shuttles are very good. The, oh, the iTrolleys. The, the iTrolley. The, they're all connected at the Disney, at the downtown Disney area. You've got to get a bus from there. But again, and again, you can save your time by snacking on the bus. Treat think of it as a moving restaurant. Nice. Thank you. So that premium bank account you've got, or that AA card, the Automobile Association, the RAC card, one of those fancy memberships, your American Express card. Have a look at the membership perks that you get with that card. Just to give you an example, I've got um, a Barclays Premier account and I've got an Amex Carbon card, both of which give me access to flight lounges, cheaper car hire, cheap travel insurance, they give me discounts on tickets, they give me discounts on travel. Now these are discounts you can probably get elsewhere too, but they really add up. To be a Avios card gets you a lounge at the airport with free food. So have a look at the perks that you've got with one of your existing memberships, your bank account and your motoring club in particular often give you all of these things for free. Except merchandise. Oh. We've actually, <laughs> this didn't actually mean Merch. to happen. <laughs> I've only found out today and maybe I was just last at the party. You can actually buy Minnie Mouse ears on <laughs> the Disney Store UK website. I didn't know because they aren't in the shop. So they are the Disneyland Paris ones. Um, but I put a picture on the Instagram that shows an aerial pair and they are beautiful. Yeah. Okay, they're £20, but that's cheaper than what they are in Disney World. Yeah. They're $25, $30. Yeah, so souvenir said. tops and merchandise. The last time I was there, I actually bought a wardrobe of clothes like this, which are kind of casual. I can, I can wear this for videos or whenever, mm -hmm. but this is now my holiday wardrobe. So I wear, I just, these my, my holiday clothes are my souvenir t-shirts from the parks. Double up. And if you do it before you go, which you can do, you can get your new holiday wardrobe and also your souvenir wardrobe at the same time and save hundreds. These tops are like 60 bucks a pop. Also, one final little bonus tip. <gasps> bonus tip, you say? Where can you get these much cheaper than, than in, the, in the parks? I don't know, tell me. The outlets. <gasps> <laughs> 
the outlets do end of so these will almost always be a limited production run and they'll do a new design but when they've only got a couple of hundred left and so they can't stock their shops fully they will ship the whole lot out to the outlet and you can get them for five eight dollars so look at the outlets especially unless if it, unless there's a particular top you want Try to avoid buying those must have it now impulse purchases in the gift shops after the rides and have a look and see what's available in the outlets. So that is it. That is our list of top money saving tips for your Orlando vacation. If you like this sort of content and you like this show, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, ooh, you know what to do. As always, please comment below. What do you think? If you've got any money saving tips you want to share, let us know. We'd love to know what you think. Subscribe by hitting that subscribe button and if you want to be kept first in the loop of our new videos, hit that alarm bell. Hi, welcome. <laughs> yeah. Hi, welcome to. <laughs> don't go too quick. Hopping up over there is the last video we put out and below that is the one YouTube thinks you should watch next. Thank you so much for watching. We shall see you in the very next show. Bye. Bye.